Director of uh, External Scientific Collaboration for USP. And USP is an independent nonprofit science organization that builds trust in medicine by working with worldwide experts to develop standards and ensure quality and safety of the medicines and of foods. Um, I'm a microbiologist by training. I've been in the drug development industry for about 20 years. I've worked on MABs, I've worked on vaccines, um, all mostly for infectious diseases. So that's this area is, is certainly the area that I'm most interested in. And uh, this is a technology that was developed back in the 70s, and the people who developed it actually won a Nobel Prize for it. But it was they discovered a way to get cells to produce a single type of antibody um, exclusively. Um, so in your body, each cell in your spleen produces one type of antibody. Each, each of the antibody producing cells only produces one type. They found a way that they could take those cells, and they started with mice, uh, and fuse those spleen cells with uh, immortal cells. And so now they have immortalized cells. And if you do it correctly, you end up with a single cell type, but it, you can expand it and grow it. And it pumps out just one antibody. So that's why it's called a monoclonal antibody, because it's a, a single antibody is made by your cell culture. And what does the evidence basis look like for using a treatment like that with SARS-CoV-2, for example? So the it's interesting because while we all associate antibodies with protection from infections, the most, most of the successful antibodies that have been used therapeutically are actually uh, have been for things like blocking immune factors, like the TNF alpha blocking ones that are, are so big, Humira, for example. Um, also, some of the anti cancer monoclonal antibodies, the ones that bind to specific targets on cancer cells and, and inactivate or activate certain pathways. The ones, there haven't been as much success as I would have expected for uh, infectious diseases. And the ones that have been successful are actually blocking antibodies. So one of the first and most successful was Synergis, which is, is the anti-RSV that's used in, in, in babies. And that blocks the virus from binding to its receptor. A couple of the other ones that are commercially available block some of the bacterial toxins and prevent their activity. So the monoclonal antibodies that are focused on uh, the SARS, uh, you know, the novel SARS coronavirus are, um, they block the ability of that virus to bind to its receptors, the ACE2 receptor. And they mostly bind to that S, that spike protein on the outside. So there sh it should be able to work. There's, there's evidence that this type of a strategy, blocking the binding of the virus to its receptor, if you can get the antibodies in early enough, should be able to work. 